You know, I was amazed at just how many people saw turning a little Nerf gun like this into something that is a little remote controlled car which sort of pulls on a piece of string, which pulls a trigger, which remotely fires the the foam pellet which has now been modified to carry a well chopped off hypodermic needle on which there would be a reactive metal that would then explode with water as a weapon. Where in reality it's actually more of a safety feature and I'll explain to you why. Now first of all you should know that I've worked on alkali metals in a research sense for at least a decade uh, mostly in the aqueous role related to biochemistry where it turns out it's really important in things like nerve impulses. It's only more recently that I've started looking at the more um, energetic elements of these metals. That's when they start off as the metal, they react with water. You typically get this explosion. really quite interesting on several levels which I won't get into here. So when these metals react with water they get very hot and this can lead to several hazards. In fact I've actually almost lost an eye from the reaction of sodium with water. Now in the lab there's one golden rule and that's you are the master of your own safety. You take prime responsibility for it. So with all of these reactions, I have a uh, full face shield on whenever I'm going anywhere near it. So I hear you ask, full face shield, how did you almost lose an eye? Um, well, it turns out that the stuff had been reacting with water. I've actually got a video of this, which I'll put into, into this video. Um, it was reacting with water, and it had managed to set the jug on fire. And so I waited until the reaction had finished, and when I thought the reaction had finished, I lifted the mask up to blow out the bit that was on fire. And there was a little unreacted bit that then sort of spits out right at the end. Now it doesn't look like much, but you have to bear in mind just how nasty this stuff is. So first of all, the explosions themselves can fire stuff out to between one and three hundred miles per hour. This is sort of getting on for half the speed of sound. So just the physical impact, the kinetic impact, can actually do damage in itself. The second thing is when these metals react with water, we've measured the temperature of sodium reacting with water going up to at least 800 degrees Celsius. Um, so you've got the thermodynamic problem as well, you're getting hit by essentially red hot metal going at half the speed of sound. The third hazard is the chemical hazard and that's the sodium reacts with either water or air to give sodium oxide which will then dissolve in, your, in the water in your body to give sodium hydroxide which will quite happily uh, turn flesh into mush. <laughs> Yeah, obviously it's a pr roughly proportional, so you know, a little piece of sodium, if it hits you, it'll burn its way in and it'll dissolve out, it'll pop. Never had it happen to me, but um, it can be really nasty like that. So full face mask is the order of the day. And there's even a problem with that. So I've had other times when I've been doing this stuff and uh, the explosion, basically, had I not had the face mask, would have certainly um, blinded me. So, at this point uh, comes the thought, uh, the face mask should not be the first and last line of defense. You really want an extra piece of safety in there, and that safety is basically distance. right? So you want to be a couple of meters away from this stuff when it explodes. So what you really want is a remote controlled mechanism for actually instigating these reactions. So that's what this is actually all about, is this now means that we can fire the sodium or the potassium into water from several meters away, which means it's actually a hell of a lot safer for especially me. Um, and yeah, so that's why putting a remote controlled car on a gun 
with a hypodermic needle is actually more of a safety feature than a weapon. Rolling. Okay. So where do you go? Uh, where? There. 